Hello, Drizzy. Hey, Jesse. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. This is the truest football podcast outside of Australia yep. since Blue Abroad <laughs> left Tel Aviv. <laughs> <laughs> I've really shot up the rankings. Um, it's good to see you, mate. Yeah, we're back. Hell yeah. It's been nine months, 13 days, 17 hours and 45 minutes since I last laid eyes on you at that pub in Quinana. Yeah. As we bid goodbye um, and as you went on an exciting journey to the UK. I followed you there for unrelated reasons, <laughs> and now I sit here gainfully unemployed, and you have just moved to Manchester. Yes, sir. Here I am. You're in Macclesfield. How weird is it that, like, for differing reasons, we've both moved to the other side of the world, and now we're, like, an hour away from each other? It's quite funny. Yeah, we were kind of talking about, like, how you've been here for nine months. I've been here for, like... Five, I think. Yeah, I think April I, to August 4, something like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, I spent a month in America. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Four or five months. But this is like up until this or last week when you moved to the Manchester area and I am in greater Manchester. Yeah. This is the closest we've lived this entire time. So we actually yeah. live way further away in England than we did in Perth. Yeah. Yeah. But here we are, bro. Other side of the world. Mm. Making love again. It comes <laughs> later. But, I literally just picked you up off the train station. So we've, we've had like a little bit of a catch up. Yeah. And uh, then you called me while I was in Canada straight after the Derby. Yep. Which was great. Yeah. <laughs> Football podcast. Yep. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about that. No. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll talk uh, about what you've been up to, man. So you've been- It doesn't even have to be like a- I'm as interested in what you've been doing because you've probably been to as many places, if not more than I have. Mm. Well, I got here in January, uh, December and like went a few places, but like- yeah, you worked hard all last year in the last two years to save up and you've been traveling like a bitch, bro. I have, like an absolute bitch. Um, <laughs> as bitches do travel, um, <laughs> according to Drake. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. Um, yeah, I remember when we did a pod, like, is either the start of this year or the end of last, the one we did over... Yeah, you were in the UK, so it must have been, like, at the start of the footy season, roughly. Um, we talked about a whole heap of different dumb yeah. stuff but i remember having like the mindset of coming over here and like making youtube a success and yeah having a pursuit and grinding and i've just come here and just partied my nuts off nothing wrong with that baby it's been That's a what we live for yeah it's been a very different trip than i had originally intended but yeah it's been great so like where did you start off like you went to america first is yeah. that right that's right yeah because since i quit my job uh, i it's rare that i get like an opportunity to go to America for an extended period of time. So I was like, this is the one time I get to do it. And my sister lives there and she married a Canadian guy and they have two kids there. So I went and went with Uncle Jesse for a little while. Yep. Um, this Coke is making me want to burp. <laughs> I'm good. We're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rusty. This is the first podcast I've done in That's five, what I mean. Don't treat it like a, a podcast. Just... Yeah, Dr- this should be a Druzy yarn, bro. Yeah, the Druzy yarn, true footy podcast. Well, I did float that, and you said that you were. Yeah, no, nah, like just I don't know. Just just, I'm, I'm, yeah, go for it, bro. Yeah, the Druzy yarn footy experience. Yes, yeah, that's what we should rebrand as. Yeah, um, but you went to America, saw your sister in Washington. Yeah, right. Yeah, Virginia. Yep, and then uh, then I went back. Went to I came here for like five days to pick up my residence permit, so I had yep. to actually physically picked it up. Pick right. It up. Then I went to Greece and yep. then I came back and then I went on Kentucky and then Lisbon and then Belfast and came back. Then I went to Sail Croatia and then a little bit of time off, maybe three weeks back here. I think that's the longest stint I've had in the UK back to back. What, three weeks. three weeks? Yeah. Shit. And then I did Scotland and Ireland and then I did Canada last week. I feel week. like we got to unpack all of these places and stories. Yeah. Um, well, I think I worked out that it's going to be 16 countries this year. Far out. Well, already or to come? Um, yeah, already. Yeah. Far out. And I'm, you beat me. and I'm going back to Greece in a couple of weeks. Before. I'm only at 11. One, <laughs> that's, no, it's still pretty good. Um, Thanks, bro. It, yeah, no, congrats. <laughs> um, get on my level. Um, yeah, so it's been a tumultuous summer. I've kind of, or, Yeah, summer. And uh, I've spent like no more than three weeks here, which has been challenging for YouTube purposes, but I've yeah. tried my very best. Uh, you would have noticed there's no Manscaped 
at, at the start of this. So RIP Manscaped. RIP Manscaped. No longer with the business. But so. that's okay, because this podcast is brought to you by Drew's. He's Athlete Academy. Oh, Helping young athletes achieve their goals. Yes. We yes. can talk about that later. No, I'll put, I'll put it in the description of the video anyway, but we will get to that. Yeah, because preseason is a coming, Jesse. <laughs> this is yeah. such a whack segue. But um, yeah, this this preseason is going to be massive for Drew's Athlete Academy. I'm already starting to like get into contact with athletes that I know are dedicated mm. and stuff like that. So, yeah, pre-season to have a big 2024 season should start as soon as this season ends, basically. Have a week or so off and then, bang, qualified strength and conditioning coach to one-on-one coach you. True Footy viewers get 20% off. So, there you go. You've got a new sponsor. Cool. You go. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this was organized. I didn't even do the ad. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so yeah there's been so much uh, that's happened since the last senior that it's difficult to know where to start yeah no shit yeah. so what well, you come over yeah so america saw new york and stuff mm-hmm. yeah yeah concrete jungle where made up. yeah it just pissed down the entire time it's nothing you can't do yeah okay alicia new york. yeah nice. good song and uh yeah great city, great city <laughs> yeah as well. expensive though right uh yeah relatively but like doesn't matter when, when you're pulling out like a bitch i don't know if it's more expensive than london <laughs> I think okay. in terms of like food and drink and stuff, yeah. I think it was pretty similar. Hookers. Mm. You know about the same. <laughs> <laughs> not so really. Tell me about Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Spain is not a place I've been this uh This, this year. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how about you? You've been traveling like a yeah. donkey. So <laughs> <laughs> I kind of travel. Yeah. Um, so yeah, earlier in the year when to the north of scotland january 1st to the north of scotland it was very cold mm. but that's the thing as well like people are like oh i couldn't live in england it's so cold but like you just dress for it you're never just like i am freezing you know what i mean like yeah. wherever you go you just adjust yeah i suppose i i was gonna say i've only done the summer here oh true um but yeah you came in jan right oh uh, yeah well december and yeah it was oh, like it was, december, it was a cold snap at the time which oh. Yep. Where does your mind go there, Jesse? <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> um, so, like, all the lakes were frozen over and stuff over England. Children actually died playing on a lake when I got here. Very tragic. Mysterious. Yeah. Had nothing to do with you, I'm sure. No, no. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I went to Scotland, saw my granddad who lives in the north of Scotland, um, which was my first time, like, travelling by myself. Went to Glasgow, uh, Abbey Moor, the Highlands there and stuff like that. Hang on, that was really fucked up what you said, and I got to gloss over it. You said kids died. Yeah, they went, like, because it was a cold snap, so, like, the lakes froze over, and, like, these kids went playing on the lake, and then just, like, fell through and, like, drowned, suffocated, died. Yep, RIP. They were, like, eight. True Footy Podcast. I don't even know where to go after yeah, that. No, what, what do you mean? What's a cold snap? It's, like, where all of a sudden, like... It's like a cold temp, like a massive drop in temperature, and then everything just like freezes over, sort of thing. How so like, instantly? Oh, not like in hours, but like I don't know. Okay. It'd, it'd be like I don't know, like six, seven degrees, and then all of a sudden it's like negatives or whatever overnight, yeah. and then yeah, so like everything freezes over, like all the trees get frosty when you walk on grass. It's like crunching under your feet and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, that was depressing. Yeah. <laughs> um. But that, like, because I have family that live in England, going up to Scotland was, like, my first, like, I don't know, traveling experience. Like, I went to the pub where my granddad lives in this hometown. Um, I'm just drinking with all these, like, local Scottish blokes, and it was, like, yeah, it was cool, whatever. And then, like, all these, like, kids my age, like, walked into the pub and started playing pool. And I was, like, that's more a bit of me. Um, Just started playing pool with them and then just, yeah, ended up, like, drinking all night with them. Ended up on the beach in Scotland. It was, like, a clear night. It was sick. Just, like... Those traveling stories where you just meet random people in like tiny towns and you mm. end up just becoming mates, like that's the best part about traveling. I agree. Yeah. I, uh, I traveled alone last year and I did it wrong. I didn't yeah. like put myself out there and meet people and I've done the exact opposite this year and it's been yeah. amazing. I've made, I've barely met anyone from Perth, which is unfortunate because yeah. I kind of wanted to like, I mean, in an ideal world, you'd make lifelong friends. Like, yeah. The closest person to me uh, is someone that I like, that I've made friends with is somebody called like, uh, sorry, somebody from a place called Orange, New South Wales, which is like four hours. That's the closest to Perth. That I've genuinely made a connection ah, with. Ah, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, but on my Kentucky, there was two Tassies and I was the only Perth person there. Yeah, like, There's okay. been no one from Perth. I've met no one person one from, from Perth. Croatia. Yeah, one person from Perth in the last nine months. Which that, that, Perth, that was yeah. in, yeah, Croatia. Um, but yeah, I mainly come over for like to initially to do football vlogs and stuff, which is why I wanted to go to Scotland. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you did do a fair few of those though. Yeah, and I thought that bang. Like, the first one I did, Celtic, got, like, 15k mm. views. I was like, yes, I've cracked a new niche. Yeah. And went to Amsterdam a week later, and it got, like, 300 views. 
I don't but, know um, what it is why that failed because you, you use the same format you went yeah. Aussie experiences yeah yeah might be a different language I don't know I don't know but um yeah that could be a factor yeah <laughs> <laughs> rats but um yeah like experiencing football in Europe has been yeah really cool Celtic Ajax uh Bayern Munich Borussia Dortmund obviously United Arsenal Southampton hashtag United I want to go see Salford which is like the team owned by Gary Neville because that's like my local team now it's crazy like my two local teams it's like literally Manchester United like 10 minutes away and yeah Salford um, yeah, a bit different to Frio and West Coast football. Well, um, enough about those teams. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it's interesting to see the difference in uh, football across leagues as well. Like, the German fans are so like the, the best sporting fans I've ever seen, and that's because their clubs are owned fifty percent plus one by the fans, sort oh, yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. So that means that like all of the match day experience and everything that happens at the club, like the majority share comes from the fans. So like. You get these, like, German fans going crazy at games. Um, you got people, like, up on, like, these, like, fences and stuff with, like, megaphones singing out. Um, like, flares going off and, like, there's nothing that the stadium staff can do because it's run by the fans. Whereas, like, I don't know, you go to the footy in Perth and you can't even stand up for two minutes without a steward coming to tell yeah, you to sit down, you know? True. It's probably um, for the best, though. It is generally a safer place. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the German experience felt very safe. Like, they're not, they're not as leery as the English fans. For example, when I went to Southampton versus Wolves, I, I told this story on the last podcast, but yeah, leaving the ground, I had like an Ajax scarf on, red and white, so it looked like Southampton, and this Wolves fan come up to me and was like, are you looking at me, bruv? Do you want to go, bruv? Like, just, so that, that just tells you like what the English fans are like, I suppose. They're very, they love to kick off. There's a lot of hatred between fans in England. Um, yeah, yeah there is yeah it's, yeah. it's a dire culture yeah <laughs> like it is genuine hatred between football clubs I went to Arsenal versus Everton at the Emirates my uncle has been a lifelong Arsenal fan um, like used to be in the firms and stuff back in the day so like because I'm with him I'm fine but he's like don't tell anyone you're a United fan um, one of his mates who we were with he knew I was a United fan but every time I got introduced to someone he's like yeah he's a United fan and then instantly everyone's just like oh I don't, I'm not going to make any conversation with this guy. He supports a different football team. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a bit like how I approach West Coast fans. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've just moved to Manchester. You're obviously a United fan. Yeah. You expect some attendances for... You, can you buy tickets for games? Yeah, it's so like hard, bro. Yeah. Like when you went, you got a hospitality thing. Yeah. You? Paid through the nose for it. Totally. How much? Like 300 quid? Yeah. About a quid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Which is... Yeah. I think it worked bucks? out to be like more than 500 bucks yeah so whatever it was yeah probably 600 bucks uh but that was man united liverpool yeah and um yeah like once in a lifetime shit so i think you're sort of paying that for any match day though honestly like to get a guaranteed premier league ticket you have to pay that much um but yeah i want to go to as many as i can that's sort of why like one manchester is a great city like really lively student culture it's actually midterm at the moment so it's not kicking off i've realized mm, but um that's why it's busier here i've noticed down yeah here in we're like 20 minutes on the train from manchester i think a lot of the there's a lot more like young people here so yeah. like your spoons is popping every night oh really yeah, <laughs> yeah. um have you noticed yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's like, like metros you know there's no music there yeah i've realized that Somebody, every spoons you go in it's quiet as eerie it is. Yeah, once you notice it, you don't notice it really until somebody, well, somebody pointed out to me. I was like, oh my God, that's how the beers are so cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember like, cause I, when I got to Manchester, I'll tell the story about moving up here as well. Cause that's like pretty crazy. Yes. Um, but yeah, I was like walking around Manchester applying for jobs and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll apply at Spoons. I just walked in. I was like, this atmosphere sucks. I'm not working here. This, yeah, it's awful. Yeah. Um, at least it's a tamer crowd though. Well, I don't know. It depends. Here, here it's a pretty tame crowd. There's a lot of old people, yeah. and like students, whenever they're in town. Otherwise, it's pretty dead. Spoons is just like the pre-spot yeah. because it's so cheap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been in Manchester for a week and a half now. I suppose I can just tell the story yeah, about how I moved here. Well, I'll, I'll just set the scene and say that I got a message from you right before I went to Canada, I think. And you said you're moving to Manchester. And I was like, oh, sick, when? And you were like, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so, a very sudden decision. Talk us through that. Yeah. So, like, after mine and Sean's two-month UK and Euro trip, I ended up back in Pulborough where I've been living all year. Um, and, like, where I was living, it's a small village. Like, I don't know what the population is, but everyone knows everyone, basically. Um, 
there's like three pubs, which in England in a town is very minimal. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, there was no social scene or anything there. And I'd sort of like completed Pulbra and did everything I wanted to, like spending time with family and stuff. Um, I'd come up to Manchester in June and I, yeah, really liked the city because it's just like, I don't know, the people are really fun. There's so many pubs. It's a lively city. It's like the best city I'd been to. Very different feel to London, hey? Yeah, completely different. London's like very chaotic. Uh, yeah, nobody gives a fuck about you. They, no. They, just, it, you, they say that you can, they can predict the population of the city you live in by how fast you walk. Yeah. And once I found that out, I noticed how fast everyone moves in London. Bro, yeah. It's crazy. Like if you, when you step out of the train station in yep. Brixton, if you don't, if you're not ready to join the stream, mm. like, boom. You're getting trampled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> boom. Yeah, boom. <laughs> Yeah, literally coming up here. So, yeah, from the moment I... I yeah, backtrack. So, um, yeah, basically made the, the decision to move up to Manchester with nowhere to live, no job. Um, not really knowing anyone. Like, I met a few people when we were up here and that was it. Um, so, yeah, chucked everything in my nutsack. I mean, my rucksack. I made that joke before. And it was very good. I'm glad you did it again. Yeah, thank you. Um, but, yeah, so I literally just had my life on my back. And yeah, just just a dream. Um, got the train from Pulbury to London. Got off at Victoria, and yeah, like had a rucksack, backpack on the front of me, and like a carry bag. I'm just like trying to get my stuff sorted, and everyone's just like brushing past me, like not giving a shit. Like that's what London's like. It's just an absolute rat race. Expensive place to live as well. But I've, uh, do you know Maddie, my friend Maddie? I think you met her at my twenty first, potentially. Anyway, I probably did. I just don't yeah. Know off the top of my head. She lives in London and she's having a great time. Like she just won an AF, she just won a football grand final playing for a London team. Oh, Maddie, sorry, I know who's going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so she loves London. Um, but yeah, Manchester, it's a lot more just like I don't know, chilled. It's got a very rich culture as well. Obviously, like massive music has come out of here, like Oasis, Stone Roses, uh, Smiths. The 1975 are from Macclesfield. Did you are know they? that? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Apparently, I, I think, thought because we got a big Ian Curtis from Joy Division like monument in town because he right. famously committed suicide and he's like graves. Here. Yeah, he's from from here. Oh, right? there you yeah. go. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's just a very rich culture. Like you walk through Manchester and all the people are like dressed differently in terms of like the fashion. It's just so out there. Well, like yeah. last um, year when I came uh, to the UK on holiday uh, in London, nobody liked my mullet. But in Manchester, people compliment on my mullet on the street. <laughs> so that tells you everything you need to know about yeah. like, the difference in culture and vibe there. Yeah. yeah. It's like, f- London was not a mullet place. <laughs> Every time I meet or like someone asks me if I'm Australian, you get like one of two like responses or whatever. It's like, I'd love to go to Australia, but the spiders just, I'm terrified yeah. of the spiders. <laughs> or um, you'll get um, some, some conversation about a mullet. Like I was working in this, I work in a bar now. The other day, they're like, do you have a mullet? And I'm like, no, I don't have a mullet. And they're like, I love a mustache and a mullet. And my mind went straight to you. You really feel <laughs> that stereotype. Hey, yeah, I'm an Australian with a mullet, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. The mustache is fairly new. That was, I, yeah. grew, I shaved that ironically because I, two reasons. I lived with my sister for that month and she hates mustaches and I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> and I'd also just finished binge watching Ted Lasso. Oh, uh, yep. Go show. Haven't uh, seen it. No, nah, but yeah, get around it. Um, you probably would hate it. Um, really? It's very wholesome. <laughs> You'd hate it. It's wholesome. Yeah. No, you probably what? find it cringy. I don't know if it's your speed. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It, but is, yeah. it is funny, but it's a bit cheesy. Right. right. It's good. It's good. Uh, yeah, but the feedback I've received is that I should never shave the mullet. Feedback from whom? Thoughts. Yeah. yeah no, but no. Uh, Let's talk I'm body half, count. I'm, I'm half joking. I'm half joking. But uh, the mustache. The other half is dead fucking yeah, serious. <laughs> yeah. No, the feedback is they love mustaches here. Yeah. Yeah. Love a bit of facial hair, just a little bit, not too much. Mm, I can't actually grow a beard anyway, so. Oh, rats. Yeah. Neither can I. Had a big shave yesterday, bro. As you can tell. Yeah, I could really tell. Yeah. Bit of stubble. Got rid of it. Um. So, yeah, where, where's been like some of you... Let's go top three favorite places you've been. Okay, that's a good way to do it. Um, all right. Edinburgh? Yeah. Did you do Edinburgh? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Great yeah. place. So, I, I went to Edinburgh like a couple of weeks back and then went to Glasgow immediately after. And the stark contrast between yeah. those two cities is huge. Hey, like you... Edinburgh feels like you're in an old town. Because yeah. Because of the architecture and there's a historic sense in you. Harry it Potter. feels... Yeah, it does feel like that, but it's just 
a cool aesthetic to be walking around town and you just there's a real sense of place yeah like rich heritage and like great architecture exactly. university exactly. culture there yeah. like yeah very nice yeah and uh very touristy but also like a lot of people move to edinburgh so it's yeah. quite diverse as well um glasgow glasgow by contrast is much bigger but part of the factor is i was only there for 24 hours and it pissed down the entire time okay. and that kind of makes the city seem shit but yeah very rough yeah very rough like, like the family uh, dog yeah yeah rough um yeah it was a bit like that and therefore uh not as enjoyable but uh, yeah in terms of aesthetic and vibe like edinburgh way way better um hard to go past croatia yeah in general i I sort of went all over the islands there on a sail croatia yep and dubrovnik the only downside is it's just like so many australians yeah you don't stand out at all so uh yeah yes obviously but um that wasn't so much what it is it's just like i don't know there's the stereotype over here of like the traveling Englishman and you can spot them for a mile off. Yeah. This is also true for Australians. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. They're, just, they're a bit darrow, some of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, you just see like the lads on tour when you go out to like Croatia. Hey, more English, I think. Like you can just see like football shirts or shirts off, bucket hats, yeah. like bum bag, lads, lads, lads. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, back, oh, go on. Oh, sorry, I was going to say the third place that I, it's, it's hard to split between Dublin Dublin was more just like a sick time because I was there with people like that I really liked yeah. that I'd met on holiday. Um, uh, but the other one was Crete in Greece. Okay. Um, which was th- way more beautiful. Yeah. It was probably the most beautiful place I went to. Yeah, I'm gutted I'm not going to get to do Greece in my time over here because I'm probably yeah, heading back November time. Um, which we'll get to, I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, on Glasgow, that was yeah the first proper time that I was genuinely by myself. Um, so like, yeah, went to the north of Scotland, saw my granddad and then went like down through the highlands with his family. And then, yeah, Glasgow, it was like first time since ever that I was by myself traveling. Um, and I remember just like having my sort of shackles up, I suppose, walking around. Um, I'm just like exploring Glasgow the first night I'm there. Um, and like there's crackheads everywhere. Like, yeah, Glasgow is a, is a rough place. You've got to look over your shoulder sort of thing. And I just hear this like crackhead couple having a domestic behind me and it keeps getting louder and coming closer. And I'm like, oh God, don't come over to me. Don't come over to me. Don't come over to me. And he just like comes up to me and in this Glaswegian accent just goes, because that's what they sound like, obviously. What does that mean in English? <laughs> All I said was, sorry, mate, I'm from Australia. I don't know what you said. Uh, I don't know. And he just goes, ah! and just like laughed in my face and walked <laughs> off. I was like, phew. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. I love it because it's the same language. It's not like you're yeah. in France and you're like, I'm sorry, I'm Australian. Just we Australian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like blatantly English as well. Uh, sorry, I'm out of Australia. Don't know what you said. Yeah. <laughs> the Glaswegian accent is mad. Me and Sean met two uh, girls from Glasgow when we were in Portugal. Um, yeah, had had, had fun that night. But um, great. <laughs> hey, elaborate. Uh, basically. Oh, yeah, who's going to watch this podcast? Oh, who cares? Sean matched with this girl on Tinder who was from Glasgow in Portugal. Um, and like Albu Ferro, where we're staying, it's sort of like Ibiza. Like there's like a strip, just clubs everywhere, basically. Young English people. Um, or yeah, British people. So yeah, we linked up with them. Um, and just, yeah, had a great time. They like drum and bass and techno. So yeah, we just got on with them. Um, but yeah, last night we were there, ended up just getting, yeah, obliterated. Um, ended up like borderline skippy, uh, skippy dipping, skinny dipping in like a beach in Portugal, at, like, uh, yeah, 3 a.m. in the morning and then flew home at like 7 a.m. the next day or whatever it was. Um, that, yeah, it was a good night, but yeah, the Glasgow accent, like something else, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Glasgow. Yeah. I can't actually really tell the difference between the Edinburgh one and the Glasgow one, but I yeah. just noticed that it's harder to understand people yeah. when I was in Glasgow. Uh, I went through my top three. What are your top three places? Highlights? Uh, oh, I really like Krakow in Poland. Like, different, but so cheap. Is like, it pronounced Krakow? I always Krakow. thought it was Krakow. Yeah, that's how you spell it. Yeah, like, yeah. Krakow. But I only learned that by watching your vlog. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah. oh, I have an uncultured swine. <laughs> um, yeah, strange place. Like... That is the biggest culture shock I've ever experienced going to Poland because, like, you got to think there were six million Jews that were killed in that part of the world during World War Two, which is only what two generations ago or so, something two three generations ago. So, like, intergenerational trauma is a very real thing. Um, and just think yeah, about I like mean, genetically. 
Or you just mean like... Well, just like, like the knock-on effect of it, as well as like how much of Poland's culture was Jewish, right, which was yeah. then taken away. The people there are so cold, like... Yeah? Super cold. Yeah, like very upfront. Um, and also, for whatever reason, every guy there is punching. Like you have like a 9 or 10 out of 10 girl, beautiful Eastern European. Like they all look like... The, you know when girls are just like sexy but just look like bitches like, like you know what I mean like, like intimidating girls yeah you know what I'm saying that is kind of a, a broadly Eastern European thing yeah I think like they produce very beautiful women but as a people they're just culturally they're not very warm yeah they're not very like happy bubbly smiley people yeah yeah exactly um, although I do know a nice happy bubbly smiley Polish girl but <laughs> <laughs> another story for another time um but oh, where was I going? Um, yeah, so cheap and like so. Me and Sean got there the first day, and we went to this restaurant. Um, and there was this waiter, like sexy as, but so cold. Like I was terrified of her. We just got there, um, and we we're like, "Could I get like a a pint of beer?" And we ordered the most expensive thing on the menu. So for yeah, it was only like thirty bucks each for like the most expensive big share play on the menu. Anyway. She, like, comes out. So, we didn't get a pint. We got a stein, which is two pints. Two pints, yeah. So, we're like, right. We got that wrong. And then the next thing she brings out is just, like, a plate of pickles. And we're like, what do we do with this? <laughs> like, is this what we ordered? Is this the most expensive thing on the menu? But we were too scared to ask. So, um... <laughs> she must have been scary. Bro, she was terrifying. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I'm like, I build up the courage to ask her. I'm like, like, what is this? And she's like... It is pickle. You can try if you like. And I'm like, all right, great. That clears it up. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say Krakow. Um, or I can tell you the worst place I went was Salzburg in Austria. Just dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I think that's because it was midterm, so there was no students there. There was also a music festival, which is the biggest music festival in Austria on at the time in Salzburg. Oh, so, there was okay. like 100,000 people at that. Yeah, at that. Yeah. So, like, we went on this pub crawl and there was literally zero girls on it. It was all, like, 40-year-old wow. German men. We were the youngest yeah. by far. It sucked. Salzburg, not worth going to. Go to Vienna instead. I went to Innsbruck in Austria as well, which was nice. But, um, yeah, I'll go Krakow. Hmm. Uh, not a holiday destination, but the best time I've had since being here, period, was Glastonbury. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is... What was that like? 10, 12 out of 10. Best best time you'll ever experience, hey, honestly. Like, um, yeah, met a really good guy there that's like a friend for life now as well who we went and linked up with in Bristol. That's a great city as well. Oh, yeah, um, I've heard Bristol's good, just as yeah. an aside. This is apparently like the new London. Yeah, well, I think like Brighton, Bristol and Manchester are sort of like areas in England which have a bit of character, they're lively sort of thing. Um, but yeah, Glastonbury, just like five days of raves, camping, um, yeah, getting up to all sorts of business, like staying up until 5am, just listening to the best music in the world, best stages in the world. Like I literally listened to my Spotify playlist at Glastonbury. Um, yeah, that's cool. Great. Who, who like had, who, who played there that you particularly liked? Well, it's all drum and bass cause I'm yeah, just okay. a, a rave to the grave, slave to the rave to the grave, you know? Um, but it was like Dimension, Subfocus, K9, Headex, Turno, like all these guys that no one really probably knows. But um, Joey Badass is an American rapper who I always listen to. Loyal Kana, like him a lot. I don't know who you would have liked to listen to there, but I feel like everyone that goes to Glastonbury has like a packed schedule. Foo Fighters were there. Didn't I've watched like 10 minutes of their set. But You would not have found me at the drum and bass tent. Yeah. I know. When we went to, what was it, Listen Out last year, you were there for like two hours and then you left because we were all just like... I was tired and cold and I was in my old man phase. Now I'm in my um, midlife yeah. crisis phase where yeah. I'm actually going out and having a good time and I know how to party again. I'm glad you've grown out of that because I, I literally, like you were saying before, I remember calling you when you were in Berlin last year and you're like, yeah, I'm just in my hotel, like, I'm not doing anything, this sucks sort of thing. I watched the Eagles... Um, against Adelaide Kennedy's last game. I remember like uh, yeah. choosing to do that more than go out in yeah. my life. And I'm no regrets. I was a great guy. <laughs> but yeah, like you're complete opposite to the last time. Well, not the last time I saw you, but yeah, pretty much like you're borderline just like hermit. And now you're like got something on every month, like jet set in the world, living it up, slaying poontang. <laughs> <laughs> it's pronounced bintangs. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Bintang the beer. Yeah. Yeah. Is that her name? Ah. Uh, yes, yeah, it's been very different. Um, 
I didn't get my third place. I would okay, say Fair of Portugal. That was great. Yeah. What's that like? Uh, like Ibiza, but like it's on the Algarve, which is the south of Portugal. So it's just like nice beaches. Like So when you say like Ibiza, I think people think of like... Party. Uh, they think of like the party thing, but yeah. Ibiza is actually quite a... Uh, sick place to visit in terms of how beautiful it is right? yeah. yeah 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 so i'll be fair like so that's what you meant yeah well i meant more the party thing oh really like, is it a party vibe too yeah, yeah massive party vibe so you got like old town and new town old town's just like restaurants and stuff but the food there is really good like i had this like we had this seafood stew sort of thing it had like octopus crab is that like disco stew i don't know what that is simpsons some of these guys will get it yeah i'm not a massive simpsons fan but um, Generational. yeah, Abu Fair of Portugal, beautiful, good food, good place, good weather. Yep, stayed in the villa with our family, and yeah, it was lovely. So there you go. I'd probably go those for the top three. That's cool. That yep. makes sense. Glass. Well, yeah. Uh, was Glastonbury your second? I'd put Glastonbury number one. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. particular. That's the highlight order. of the trip. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Cool. I don't know what mine would be. Probably South Croatia. South yeah. Croatia, and then the trip to Dublin and Ireland. Yeah. So I went. I went to sorry Scotland and Ireland. Uh, I went to Scotland Island with a mate that I met on Kentucky like six yeah, years right. ago. That was a guy from New South Wales. Um, and South Croatia was sick. The, the thing that I liked about South Croatia for anyone like considering traveling, Kentucky's cool, but like if you do a short trip, you have to get up at 7 a.m. every day. Yeah, and right. people were going to bed at like 5 and getting up at 6.50 yeah. and going to breakfast at 7 to get on the bus. The cool thing about Croatia is that we, we partied all night and then... You could get up for breakfast at nine, but then you can go back to bed because you sleep on the boat. Yeah. So that was like, <laughs> that was the highlight yeah. that I could actually sleep. Um, but yeah, no, Croatia's probably, did I list Croatia as one of my favorite? Yeah. I did, yeah. yeah. Croatia's probably up there with my absolute favorite place. Yeah. One of the best days me and Sean had on the trip was in Prague. Very overrated city, I found. Like, it's cool. It's nice. It's cool. Yep. Yeah, great. But like, from what I've heard, like everyone talking about Prague, it's like one of the best cities in Europe. And have you been? No, no. I wanted to do Eastern and sort of Central Europe while yeah. I was here, but it's just more the one place I can get to. Yeah. No, nah, Prague, it's like so, so touristy. Like you don't really meet too many locals because it's just like the city. It's just everyone walking around like, yeah. Um, but we had one of our best days of the trip. So there's this drum and bass DJ called Sota. He's actually from uh, near Pulbra. He, go- he went to the same gym that I went to. And like he's one of the like fastest rising drum and bass DJs in the world right now. Um, me and Sean bumped into him at H and M in Horsham, and I just like recognised his face from like like listening to his music. And he goes to our gym, um, and then we're on the train from Krakow to Prague, and he puts on his Instagram story like, "Yeah, we're going. Um, we're, I'm in Prague tomorrow. Last tickets available." And me and Sean are like, "No way!" Because when me and Sean go out, we can't get down to like R and B or just like yeah. truth out like. If we actually want to get involved, it has to be drum and bass. You drum and ba- bass folk are not versatile. As no. a general rule. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much all in on drum and bass. Hey, techno, I can sort of vibe to. If we're thinking of the same thing with techno, no. Yeah, I like hardcore techno, not like EDM. No, no. I went to um, Ultra in, in Split. Yeah, yeah. There, that was horrible. Yeah. yeah. Horrible music. Yeah. 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 yeah, we just sat in the grass and... Sat on the grass. Yeah. Had DNMs on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, everyone knows what you're talking about. Nah, nah. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, this guy posted on his Instagram story like I'm in Prague doing a boat party, and I was like, bro, like we're in Prague. He's like, no way. Um, yeah, didn't realize when we bought the tickets that it was a boat party. So like, there's like this massive river that goes through Prague, and it was just a boat party, drum and bass. Like, it was just the best time ever. It was just absolute scenes. But yeah, we just like got to talk to him all night, like hang out with him, have yarns with him and stuff. And yeah, he's a real cool guy. So that was yeah another highlight of the trip. Went to Auschwitz. Mm. Great time. <laughs> really enjoyed that. Did you do any cartwheels? Sean did. I noticed that. <laughs> I was watching and I was like. Surely he did not just do that. <laughs> was there anyone around? No, no. Because like, yeah, the, all the vlogs, like they've, they've been so fun to make. And the vlogs have been so good, by the yeah, way. If, if anyone's watching, go check out Drizzy's channel. Because like the, the vlogs are not getting the views that you probably wanted, but yeah. I've watched all of them. They're really funny. Yeah, no, it's been a great time making them. Just like me and Sean will just come up with a stupid idea and just be like, vlog it. Get the camera on, just film some stupid shit. But yeah, we're in, like <laughs> the night before we went on this pub crawl, um, and got absolutely hammered. Met these two Norwegian supermodels. It's another story for... I mean, I can go into that story as well, maybe. But, um, 
Yeah, like we were hammered and like woke up and it's like, yep, we're going to Auschwitz, like disgustingly hungover. Um, and then on the vlog, I was like, yeah, like all respect from this point. Like, obviously, this is a very sensitive topic. And I'm just like sort of filming, filming, filming. And Sean's like, should I do a cartwheel? I'm like, it's not, it's not offensive, is it? So like, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with the cartwheel? There's nothing wrong with the cartwheel. It's a little bit off tone. Yeah. yeah. Look, I laughed. I won't, <laughs> I won't lie. I laughed. But yeah. Yeah. I laughed because it was so wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was that, that was the same vlog as good, Anakin, good. That was, that was, yeah. that was a real crowd pleasure. Kill him now. <laughs> oh. You should like, kept, kept sending me messages for weeks. Just like, I'm still laughing at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. Yeah. If, if anyone needs to know like what that is, go watch his Auschwitz vlog. Yeah. <laughs> you see a cartwheel in there as well. Um, but yeah, bro, it's been living it up. It's been sick. It's what life's about, really, eh? I've been living it up too, and uh, I'm so fucking fat right now. Are I'm you? I'm up to 89. Can I see the, the rig? Later. No, nah, go on. No, nah, no, no. Whip no, it no, out no. just for the organic yeah, reaction. Come no, on, stop being a bitch. Go on. on. No. Uh, it, you can't really tell. The people want to, yeah. You can't really tell, but like, yeah. it's a bit soft. Yeah. Well, to put, put it in up. context, like, I was 82 kilos before I had my wits and teeth out at the start of this year, and I'm 89 now. And I Bad. have lost a lot of muscle. So that's yep. like 10 kilos of fat, probably, we're talking about. Um, but yeah. You know how to put on muscle? Sign up for Drewsy's Athletic Academy. This foot. Nah. Nah, nah, we'll yeah. get to that. Um, Sean got fat as well. I noticed he was, he doesn't look fat. He's obviously like, he was in great shape to begin with. So him putting on fat is not that noticeable. But I did notice a difference in his physique. He put up a story like yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But he just, he still looks like, Athletic, like he yeah, doesn't look bad. Don't, don't give him any confidence, bro. He'll be listening to that, like yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, no, like it, it, like he he doesn't look fat, but it's just that, like I know that Sean's always been in ripping shape. So uh, I, he, I looks that, he looks fat. He looks fat. Well, at least on one Um, we literally drunk <laughs> for every day, except for like two or three for two months, like nonstop. Like it was so nice to just get back to pool and just be like ah. Nice, like especially after Glastonbury, like Glastonbury takes it out of you. You're like oh, really? sleeping, yeah. yeah. You're sleeping five, six hours Puts in a it back in again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like the, I was sleeping on an air mattress, and like it has sort of like dimples all the way through. If you can picture like a blow up bed with like little dimples, I woke up one night and like sat up, and every dimple was filled with sweat. Like, oh, yeah, disgusting. disgusting. Bruh, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, it's in the middle of summer and you're sleeping in a tent, camping there for five days. You're showering with like a watering can. Yeah, yeah, like, I saw that actually, yeah. It is, yeah, primitive. Your hygiene definitely goes down. Um, but yeah, that, that was gross. And then like we do glass and re, which is a slog. Come down all that next week and then off to Europe for three weeks, like straight off the back. So yeah, it was a mission, buddy. It was a mission. And then, yeah, got back to Pulbra and I was like, I'm bored. I'm over to Manchester. Yeah, that was very spontaneous. So, uh, did you say that you literally just came here with like... I think we got sidetracked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You said you came here with just like all your stuff and just moved into a hostel. Yeah. And you were like, I'm going to get a job. I have two weeks to make this work. Yeah, pretty much. So, I had like probably like 1,800 Australian and like a hostel was probably like 75 a night, the one I was staying in. Yeah, pretty wow. expensive. That is expensive, yeah. Um, and yeah, just started sort of walking around Manchester. I didn't know anyone trying to find work and like smashing spare room, trying to find somewhere to live. Um, and yeah, ended up making it work. I had probably about three days until I had to go back to Pulbra, like until my money ran out. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah. So it was really like, yeah, survival mode, find a job, find a way to live. And yeah, luckily I have found a place to live. Um, but yeah, I was really homesick. I was telling you before earlier this week, like, cause my mission was to just get up here, settle, um, yeah, get a place, get a job, and then, like, live here. And then once I achieved that goal, it's, like, classic footy, like, or, like, athlete. Like, they get the outcome, and then what do they have after that? Yeah. Um, and I was just living in some house in some random English suburb. Didn't know anyone. Got a job, but, like, don't have any shifts for a few days. I was just sat there, like, yeah, rats, what now? Like, don't have anything to look forward to sort of thing. Yeah, okay. Which is, like, and you were in Canada as well. Yeah. But, like, now you're back. I'm fine. <laughs> Football. Football. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that is not something I can relate to at all. I Being have homesick. not been homesick once. Yeah. yeah. I just saw my family like... Um, exactly. That, yeah. yeah, so that helps. Like uh, in Canada, I saw one sister and then the week before I was in Kent 
to see my other sister who was visiting as well. So that that helps. Yeah. But uh, no desire to go back to Perth at all. Yeah. See, I've I've had that like the whole time I've been here. Like people have been like, "Oh, you see, uh, you're homesick. You you missing home." It's like, yeah, I miss my dog. I miss my family. But like, I don't want to go back. I like home. how dog came first. Yeah. No, dead set. Miss my dog more than anything because you can speak to mum and dad. Like, I I can't cuddle my dog, and he's uh, he's the best boy in the world as well. Um, where where was I going? Um, homesick. So like. My return, my initial return was booked for next Friday. So, like the 25th of oh, August. Oh, right. Wow. Um, wow. So, I could have gone home yeah, next yeah. Friday if I wanted to. But, like, after Sean left, I, I was the same as you. I was like, I have no desire to go home yet. Like, I've still got a little bit more juice in me. Gross. Um, hey? Gross. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, like, yeah, got up here, t- uh, rebooked my return flight, and then... I was sort of like, oh, God, I really could have gone home next week. Um, but I think it'll just take, like, meeting new people, having you here helps because we can just hang out and film content. Um, I should be all right now, though, to be fair. Like, it was just that initial adjustment period of figuring it out. So, yeah. I don't feel like I have really any connection to Perth anymore, other than my dad and my sister and my, <laughs> the rest of my family. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, I'm not really from Perth to begin with. I didn't really grow I didn't grow up there. You're not Mexican. Yeah. I only lived there from 19 to 29. It was arguably the worst 10 years of my life. Yeah. <laughs> well, only because that was like adulthood. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, wouldn't say I loved uni. Um, it was okay. And then, um, yeah, the rest of it's been a grind. And then mm. now I know I'm coming here while it's summer and I don't have a job. So I'm just doing whatever the hell yeah. I want. So I know that it's all contextual, but... I guess, I guess ask me again in three months when the, the weather's terrible. But um, but either way, that would only be like this place pissing me off hypothetically and not Perth pulling me back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, Perth isn't pulling me back at all because like the thing is, you know exactly what's going on there. Like you can picture right now, like if it was this time of day, like where you would be in your normal day-to-day life back at Perth. Like if it was you, you'd be at Bunnings or whatever. Like for me, I'd be driving around Rockingham, like mowing lawns. Picking up chicks. No, definitely not. I've got no chicks in Perth. Um, but also, I have been here for like four months more than you. Yeah. So, like, I got to the point where I burnt through all my money. Yeah, And yeah. then had to find a way to live. And then I was like, oh, I could probably go home now. And when I go home, I'm not going to say that. Like, my plan is definitely to move to Melbourne in 2024. Hopefully live with Caden. Because, God, guys like you, Cat and Cardman, are killing it right now. <laughs> We need to get out of Perth. You cats dominated that yeah. market. He's really got that niche now all to himself. Yeah, he really owns it. Um, but um, I suppose, yeah, a bit of football. Well, not football, but like there is a new wave of AFL content creators right now. Marmalade have just like burst out of nowhere. Have you seen those boys? I, I must admit, I haven't really followed much of what's yeah. happening. That was really like um, a good indicator of how much my head's not in the game yeah. anymore. But like, I, I I see it on TikTok and I'm like, or Instagram, I'm not TikTok, Instagram, and I'm yeah. vaguely aware that there's stuff going around like that Will Taylor guy and yeah. Yeah. Stray, was that another one? Stray, right. yeah. I, I yeah. don't know anything about Will it. Taylor, Stray, and God, I'm not sure what the, the big dog's name is. Are, are they all on the same podcast? Is it the Res- yeah. Ultimate Resident? Yeah. Is that who it is? So like they, they sort of popped off on TikTok. Um, I saw this through the uh, Prime Train Pod, who's also in that new wave. Um, like, after Gather Round, they just started smashing content on TikTok and it just started doing really well. And their, like, thing was, like, the shittest football you could, like, possibly see. Um, and then, yeah, everyone just found that funny. But they've just moved to Melbourne. Um, Connor Rogers has just moved up to Melbourne. He lives in the same suburb as Caden. Obviously, you got Caden. Um, so, yeah, uh, Shep Mates as well. So, like, there, that is... This is the beginning of the industry, I think. Like the the YouTube sports media industry, AFL niche, just now is like the the boat is boarding, mm. and I want to be there when it That's takes nice. off. Fair enough. And the fact, like, I was, like you always say, like, oh, I don't really get like how my channel could improve, be improved by going to Melbourne, but it just would. Like the networking and everything there. Um, I was talking to Caden about it the other day. He's like. Yeah, it might not be much different, but like the flowers a bit fresher, the, like the pans are a little bit hotter. Like you're you're in the place to be. That's such a Caden thing to say. Yeah. Like such an analogy that he would yeah. use. He's so good at this. He is a yeah. <laughs> but no, definitely. If you want to, if you want to make this like as successful as possible, it's a non-negotiable to go to Melbourne, in my opinion. 
Because realistically, like, how many times have we had this podcast and been like, are you going to quit or uh, are you going to make it better or are you going to make this full time? But like, there's a motorbike. Um, realistically, I don't think you're going to make it doing it the way you're doing it. The current formula doesn't work. In the work. UK. <laughs> yeah, but even in Perth, like, how are you going to change it? Before I answer that, I actually I've thought of a funny anecdote um, to, to, to demonstrate demonstrates how irrelevant this channel has become. But it's quite funny. Um, I was on Kentucky and this girl put me on her Insta story or something like that, and some or Snap story, and somebody messaged saying, "Oh my god, it's true footy." And I was like, "Oh yes, yeah, ego boost." Like I'm still getting to know the Kentucky people. Yeah, I've kind of known. Um, I'm joking, not really, but the which I was quite flattered. And then he replied to her something else she said, and he was like. Man, I used to miss... I miss that guy's videos. I wish he would still make him <laughs> I was like... I've literally gone full time and like done I nothing wish else. he still made videos. So funny. But yeah, that kind of sums up like <laughs> how much I've plateaued. Not even plateaued, just like a third of the views that I used to get. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Good it's times. Only, it's like the... Um, oh, I was going to give an analogy, but I'm not as good at, at them as them as Caden. As Caden. He's very good at Um it. Yeah, like you keep feeding the people the same thing, they're just going to get sick of it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I have a couple of theories, which I won't say on camera necessarily as to why I've dipped algorithmically. But yeah, the content's probably stale. The, the thing is actually, doing this full time has actually impeded me a little bit. And I think the reason for that is, is now that I'm financially reliable on it, my mindset is too focused on how many pieces of content I can yeah. get out. Whereas before when I would only maybe make three or four videos a week, I could put more time into each one and be more creative. Whereas yeah. now I'm just like, all right, I've got I've got to make two videos today because I'm away for the rest of the month. Yeah. Um, what are they going to do? Draft rankings, blah blah blah, power rankings. Um, mm. and I think that's negatively impact impacted. Yeah. I can't You're take motivated time. Motivated by like output. I have to be. Yeah. Yeah. I have to be. Um, not that it's paid off, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything? Well, this is probably a conversation for off the podcast, but like, is there anything that like you w- could think that I could do to put on true footy like is there any content you'd be like yeah palm that off to Drew Z I thought your that. nine thing slapped yeah, yeah I, thought true. It was, I, I thought it was good I used to laugh while editing them because yeah. like, I think you brought the right balance of like what's happening in the football world and then cracking jokes yeah and that's something that I've kind of gotten away from a little bit too much there's yeah. a lot less charisma on the channel mm. since uh, since I had someone to bounce off but I yeah. found like you were very good at that so I think you, you, having you back on hypothetically nine things is uh, that would help a lot it's crazy to think, like... Because I, I must have done nine things from round one to round whatever. Yeah, eight, nine, I can't remember. Yeah. And like, I was in the loop with football, but two months away from it, um, I really don't know what's going on in the league, to be honest. Like, obviously, I know, like, yeah, Collingwood are on top. The Eagles doing are doing well. all right, so... Yeah, yeah West yeah. Coast are doing absolutely fantastic. Actually, never been better, in my opinion, West Coast. Um, so... Rats. Yeah, like... I would do a nine things, but I just feel like... You'd be phoning it in at this point. Yeah, like it, it wouldn't be authentic and genuine as well. Like I used to film that Sunday night and now like I work Sundays. So like it'd be late. The views wouldn't be as good. I feel like they've lost traction. I'll get back to doing nine things eventually though. Yeah, you but, can um, check out a Frio video or something. Just keep it easy. That's what I do. Like yeah, I, I've, true. I've made a lot of West Coast content this year and um, thankfully there's been a bit of an audience for it. I do wonder if that's just because we're so historically shit <laughs> that um, that people are tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. Yesterday when I called you, uh, you said something along the lines of like, oh man, your team is so terrible right now. I fucking love it. And there was like this instinctual re- uh, reaction to me that was about to debate you and be like, nah. <laughs> and then right before it came out of my mouth, I was like, ah. <laughs> he's right. You have no foot to stand on. No, absolutely not. Especially not after the derby. But um, YOLO. Yeah, what point was going to make there? Classic. Forgetting points. Um, my, my content, I think... Yeah, I'm just going to play to my strengths now. And I think that's the Eagles content. Uh, because it's so... E- Historically easy. shit. Yeah. Well, I'm just... You know, without tooting my own horn, I think I'm good at it, relatively speaking, rather than trying to do like a round review. Yeah. Um, that That's horrible content to make. Like you do it way better than I do. Um, but yeah, the Eagles stuff where I can talk about it passionately and and well, like mm. uh, that, the, the views are there. Trade and draft content. Yeah. It's a bit more draft content than I have been. 
Um, but yeah, the views have been hit and miss. That's for sure. Yeah, might as well just talk about how much of a shambles your club is, then, Jesse. Now that we're on the topic of it, I've milked it for all it's worth. Yeah, change is afoot. Yeah, three retirements, which is a bit emotional. Um, <laughs> oh, I love it. Keep going. Uh, um, Keep going. Potentially new coach. That's bubbling away now. <laughs> Wait, that's actually doing you a favour. The team is bottom four. Bottom five. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Nah, we're both basically, basically the same, man. Nah. <sighs> I can talk about Frio, but I just want to keep hearing your depression. The sure retirement hurts. Yeah, I'm From so a sadness glad to see him. View. He's the last player that I'm going to idolise. Like, I grew up idolising him. Now I'm 12 years older than this bunch of... Like, I'm 12 years older than Harley (laughs) Reid. I'm not going to idolise... It's going to be... It's a weird transition for me at this age of 29 and a half uh, where, like, if I was on the list right now, I'd be talked about as a retirement option. Yeah. I've got a bad back. I've got injury issues. (laughs) Yeah. I would not be... uh, Not be getting traded, that's for sure. That hit me when... um, I can't remember who it was. might have been Trelaw. No, nah, it wasn't Trelaw. Someone, yeah, maybe Trelaw, was talked about being a traitor to Hawthorne and then the article was like, but he's 28, so he's too old. And I was like, <laughs> I'm the same age as Trelaw. So um, that hurt. But yeah, Shui retirement, uh, that's um, that's an end of an era. I, yeah. I feel like this now is, and I said this in a video recently, this is like the transition to the new era at West yeah, Coast. 100%. It hadn't happened officially in 22 and 23 because we still had so many veterans. But now that to, uh, that tide is starting to turn and like yeah. the marketing is all going to be different. Harley Reid's potentially new, the new like PR poster boy, I reckon, um, if that happens, assuming it does. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a very different look as of next year. Yeah, it's a stinky end to the chapter though. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like 2018, like great. Yeah, win flag, whatever. Cool. <laughs> great right, yeah and then like that was it 2019 the tim kelly trade where it's like end of yeah what did you give away was it two first rounders for tim kelly yeah pick 14 24 33 and a future first oh that has come back to bait you on the ass yeah like some of those picks weren't uh, they were kind of stinky picks. yeah but the fact that you could have reinforced with youth like you like tim kelly what's he gonna do for the rest of his career just be a fart in your like midfield mad dog is, is is tim kelly a top like 50 player in the comp do you reckon it's hard to measure i, I think yes but <laughs> hey buddy <laughs> my roommate's the door, like, in. Slightly he's over. not wearing a shirt <laughs> nah. how'd you go it's hard, so. how was the gym good did you walk around outside shirtless you had to go yeah nice that's hot <laughs> did you actually you walk around macclesfield yeah. <laughs> it's like it's so it's just coming to us i'm just yeah right happy yeah, days that's kind of hot let it hang we've probably only got another what 20 yeah something like that, that. Yeah, but you can come in, hang out, keep your shirt off. <laughs> That's my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one can. Yeah. Can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not yet. <laughs> We're racing to eighty-five kilos. <laughs> <laughs> um, where were we? Oh, oh, Tim Kelly. Yeah. yeah. Now nah, he's been a beast this year. It's just that when the team around him is so poor, like he's not gonna. He's not gonna like get brown low votes. Yeah, I never watched Tim Kelly and go like, "Oh God, this I, is the like, best version of Tim Kelly I've ever seen." Really? Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I just don't ever see him having an impact, but that's probably because I don't watch Eagles closely enough. Yeah, who would? Uh, yeah, he he played a bit more outside at Geelong and like played to his skill set, and he played in a better midfield, so they like he kind of looked better. But yeah. I think he's evolved now to being like an actual contested ball winner. Yeah. Um, okay. And yeah, he his his kicking radar can be off, but like. Like with the team as bad as it is, like yeah, I don't really blame him. <laughs> Why has Simpson not been sacked? Is it because like you are an absolute dumpster fire, worst football club in the history of the competition? That it's like you don't want to throw a new coach in the deep end and have to put up with this because like your efforts as a team this year have been like literally non-existent. Like that Sydney game and the Frio game. Which I don't understand. Like the first quarter, first half a quarter of the derby, you were competitive. Like you were literally on top of us. We kick one goal and that is it. Like there is no F. Like that is so weird that your players aren't even motivated to run or tackle. That is bad. It's not even like skill level, list demographic, yada, yada, yada. It is zero effort. Like putrid. <laughs> I love, this is a side note, I love watching Kane Corns. Like saying the same shit about West Coast every week. He's like, still don't know how Adam Simpson's there. I'll say it again. No coach in the history of sports ever has been through a period like this and survived. This season's been a great year in the AFL, but West Coast have put a real dampener on it or something like that. 
I love how he's just so bold and just cutthroat and just he like takes the micro and makes it macro but to be fair west coast are fucking putrid yeah i don't disagree with anything that he just said there um this week he decided to call us a, like a laughing stock because of that last minute um omission of brady hoff that is unprofessional though sure but like it's it's not that bad like yes, the, it is. the player wasn't even aware what do you mean he didn't know that there was a rule oh yeah but why why was he fielded in the 22 if he didn't train all week Oh, because, like, there's tons of players sick. Not just West Coast. Like, every club that has players play sick. It's the middle of winter. There's flus going around. Yeah. But we had tons of players sick in that derby. I suppose it... Yeah, I suppose that's it why we lost. Difference. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I suppose it doesn't make a difference when you get pumped by 100 every week, does it? Yeah. Well, we also don't have, like, that many plays in the waffle. We've never had more yeah. than about six this year. It just shows you the strength of, like, talent you're putting out there at the moment. If you're playing a kid that's sick, hasn't trained all week... And he's being played in the biggest game of the season, which is oh, the derby. There's so many players out for the season and unavailable though, that like we've had to make calls like that all year. Yeah, that's putrid. So um, how has Simpson survived this? The, the main reason is contractual. He's got a contract to the end of 2025. You sack a coach, you have to pay him the entire length of the contract. And there's a salary cap for football department spending, which includes the coach's salary. Yeah. So then you, we go over the salary cap by every five hundred thousand dollars you go over the salary cap, you pay a two hundred percent tax on it. So they yeah. they work out it's like a six million dollar hit to West Coast bottom line if they sack Adam Simpson and replace him with a coach. And for context, West Coast is the most profitable club. They average about five million dollars of profit every year. So it's a yeah. profit into a loss. Yeah. And then the second point ties into it, which is like someone taking over as coach right now, you're probably setting him up to fail. Yeah. yeah. A little bit different now, like at the end of the season, like the second half of the year has been a lot better in terms of like okay west coast has some good talented kids now like hewitt um is a standout marrick is another gun uh like there's actually kids there now to get excited about so you add in harley reed to that and maybe round one next year there you could foresee a coach coming in and doing better but for the most part it's been a dumpster fire yeah um, and yeah spending six million dollars for no guarantee of improvement like it is still a risk yeah uh, that's the reason he hasn't been sacked he can't be the coach next year. If he's the coach next year, that is ludicrous. Well, it sounds like the Derby, according to John Ralph, was the game that switched everything because they were going to back in Simo, apparently, if we didn't have any more humiliating losses. <laughs> no more humi- humiliating losses. You can lose by 50. You can lose by 60. Just not 100. Pretty much. Yeah, that, that was the threshold. And then we had that. So it sounds like it sounds like he may get the tap on the shoulder. But um, So we should... He can't. He can't motivate the list. Not only I. Yeah, just they look pretty tired in the derby to me. Like they look <laughs> the tired. Fans all year. are pretty tired of the disgusting performances you put out every week. I hate West Coast fans more than anyone, but I think we've just... proven to be pretty good fans this year. For yeah, we we got like forty thousand uh, dollars, forty thousand people to our last home game or something like that. What the derby? Uh, no, there was like fifty one there. Yeah, it's because you played. Who was it? North Melbourne or? Was it North Melbourne? Yeah, but, but they've consistently... We win this one. Let's go. The, the crowds would be consistently better than Fremantle. Honestly. Yeah. Not, maybe not this year, but like in general. Yeah. Like that, that, that we've done a good job of turning up and supporting the team when the team has not deserved it at times. Yeah, yeah that, that is something that pisses me off about WA fans in general. Like it's Frio as well. Like when we're shit, the fans don't show up. It's like you're not even a fan. You're just someone that goes for a day out at that point. I remember like people in high school... Because like, I've been a Freo member since I was four years old, gone to every game, whether we're flying or awful. Um, and like people would just be like, oh yeah, no, I haven't really been watching Freo now that they're shit. It's like, bro, you're not a, you're not a fan. Yeah. You're not a supporter. Like You support your club through thick and thin. I feel like Freo also attracts a bit more of the hipster kind of young yeah. person as well, which is the sort of person who's going to be fickle about I'll it. I'll go for the purple team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're different. They're working class. They're not successful. They're an underdog. <laughs> Your Kevin Parkers of the world. I don't know who that is. Tame Impala. Ah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Looks homeless, sort of. Yeah, he's, he's a magician. Um, let's talk about Fremantle for a bit. Yeah. So, yeah, bottom four finish. Your team's so shit. We're not, though. That's the thing. Bottom five. I First quarter, awful. And I don't get that. That is, that is one of the strangest things. It's like we're pushing a boulder uphill until we get that first goal, and then we're on. Like, we... we yeah, if we're in the game in the second quarter, like within a couple goals, we'll compete all the way through. Um, but like there was a time this year we had a patch before the buy. Post buy, we 
went to shit. And like that's what happened to St. Kilda last year. Like they were like red hot and then just went to shit post by. Um but we had a patch where we beat Sydney away, Melbourne at the MCG, Geelong at home. Um and there was someone else in there that was really impressive that I can't really think about. Took Brisbane to the wire this week, who were one of the best teams uh two weeks ago. Um we really should have won that game. We had our opportunities to win that. Although Brisbane are sort of their form hasn't been great in the last month or so. Um but like we can still compete with the best teams. Another factor is we lost twenty five percent of our list in this past off season, and that's not just like turnover of lists. That's David Mundy, Griff Logue, Rory Lobb, Blake Akers, and Darcy Tucker, who are all like seven or eight plus year players. You're replacing that with Jai Amos, uh, Matt Johnson. Uh, Corey Wagner on half back. Man, you wouldn't say that Jay Amis hasn't improved your team. Oh, mate, he he's the best forward we've had since Pav. He he's a freak. That kid, he's so like wiry, athletic. Oh, he's, I love him. I love him. He's just like a robot to the coaches as well. I feel like there's like input, like do this, and he just does it perfectly. He's so coachable. Yeah, kick three goals. Yeah, okay, master. <laughs> Bring a contest. <laughs> um, and Luke Jackson, like anyone who has talked shit about Luke Jackson this year is just an absolute mong. Like, I feel sorry for your ability to watch football because he is a unicorn, bro. So good. So good. Just his follow-ups, his tackling, his ability to, like, go forward and kick goals. He makes an impact all over the ground. I remember, like, yeah, Kane Corns again just being like, well, that trade did not work. That was not worth it. Like, three rounds into the season. It's like, it obviously takes time for a player to settle into your side. Um... Kane Chorns, Kane Chorns, Kane Chorns. We'll is, go with that. Yeah, let's, let's make that a new thing. Yeah. Kane Chorns, he, uh, he's just a shock job. He literally just says anything for the headline. Yeah. And sometimes he makes good points, but you throw enough darts, uh, then some of them are going to be a bullseye. Yep. Yep. That's not even the best thing in the world, but you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Come on, Caden, where's the analogy? Um, I think like 80% of the points he makes is good. And then the like the closing act of all of them is just like, Headline grabbing, like emotion evoking, yeah. And he's got so many enemies as well that his ego feeds into it a little bit, yeah. like Texas Walker and stuff ego, like that. Bro. Now he's yeah, he's got this thing against Simo. I'm not saying he's wrong about Simo, but I'm just saying he has his enemies in the AFL world, so he just yeah. like tries to tear people apart. I remember him talking shit about Tim Taranto earlier this year, like. Yeah, he's on big bucks. God, he's he's getting paid that much money to get thirteen touches and two tackles, and then now he's like ended up being like top ten in the Brown yeah. Bowl or something yeah, yeah. this year. It's like yeah, we'll probably finish higher than that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Kane Corns is a bit of a mug for that, but it's good content, especially when he's riffing. Into oh, it's working! Goes. It's working because yeah. people will like get infuriated and comment, and then it builds interaction. So he's yeah. he's doing his job to a T. He's just very annoying. It's so funny, like growing up, like in the social media age and like having pages like sports bible or like whatever like headline grabbing pages and it's like oh this club's done this and then like you're infuriated as a kid and you're like no that's not how it is i'm going to comment on this because that's wrong and that is exactly what they want like ksi jake paul logan paul all of their interviews and stuff it's them just like riling up the crowd like saying cringe shit so everyone's like oh god i hate i hate that guy i hope he gets knocked out i can't wait to tune into that that's how people get clicks and like drive it up. They know exactly what they're doing. Do you want to go to KSI Tommy Fury? I could potentially. Yeah, yeah. it's in October in Manchester. Let's do it. Yeah, I might be too broke, but yeah. Yeah, well, I'd have a look. Look, it's probably sold out already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we'll shit. see. That would be cool. God, they've got Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Arsenal, and the UFC under the prime banner now. Yeah, that's crazy. I've never had a prime. Neither. Maybe we should do a video. Well, let's on. go to Tesco after this. <laughs> What are they, like four pound, five pound each or something? Uh, let's go to Audi then. Yeah. I don't even think they sell them at Audi. No, they do. Do they? Yeah, that's where I saw it. Yeah, right. No, I've never had a Prime. Um, we were talking... I did have a football point to loop back around to, but... No, I can't I'm not that it. committed to the football yeah. talk. I think we've done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, Frio. Like, that's what it was. 25% list turnover. Younger guys coming through. Like, last season set a massive expectation on this list and it was only Longmuir's sec- second season I want to say last year yeah. I think 20 when did we sack Ross Lyon that was 2019 2020 20, my third year I, I think um, so like yeah very young list massively overachieve like Monday had a, such a good year last year as well um, 
yeah, and like Brayshaw hasn't had the same year that he had. Um, we're still like a yeah, like bottom four in terms of uh, list age. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, and the talent that we have is ridiculous. Like we had like five players in the twenty two under twenty two or something mm. like that. Mm. Hayden Young, like what a season he's had going into the midfield. He looks like an absolute beast. Like I knew Hayden Young was going to have a good career. His versatility to go into the midfield just completely changes everything. Because he's got, like, the physicality of, like, a defender in terms of, like, the tackling, like, when the ball goes to ground. But he's also good enough to, like, at ground level to find the ball and flick it to the outside. Like, just playing down back has been massive for him in his development. And then, not to mention his best asset, which is how he uses the ball. Like, if he can get into space, he's kicking. And, like, if he can find a Jai Amos or uh, Josh Tracy, who, another guy who's had a great season, like... There's been a lot of positives this year, even though like we've stunk. Um, and like where our list is at, we're, we're never going to win the flag this year anyway. So I think it's been a good year of development. Um, and yeah, like whether we make the top eight next year or whatever, it doesn't matter as long as we yeah improve and yeah iron out the weaknesses, which is mainly just the slow starts. But yeah. Mm. So two two good years for our WA teams in general. That's <laughs> the conclusion. Yeah, fair enough. Alex Pierce has been a bit as a captain though, I must say. He's probably my least favorite docker. Yeah. Well, see, I hated Luke Shuey. Captain, captain. It's like, if someone embodies a club, you hate them. No, nah, you're just wrong. Uh, Alex Pierce, I didn't like well before he became Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah. Yeah. But like, bro, his kicking is so bad. Like, he just mongrels balls every time like, under pressure. Shit ball like drop. Like you on a Saturday night. Yep. Shit ball drop. Scuffs his kicks all the time. Like, don't get me wrong. He's courageous. He's a good intercept player and stuff like that. But it's just like watching a giraffe on roller skates every time he gets the ball. Hey, I love him, but I, I don't think he should be captain. Then again, yeah, I thought it was a weird choice. You don't want to put the onus on Sarong and Brayshaw at this young age. I listened to Dylan Friends with Mark Murphy, I think it might have been. Yeah. Yeah, he was the captain of Carlton, right, for a period. Did you take over after Judd? Because Judd and me did. Yeah, I think so. So, like, obviously, that was a. it's always been a terrible period for Carlton, except for this last half of the year but um he literally like they knew that Cripps was going to be the next captain but because they were struggling like they didn't want to put all that pressure on Cripps straight away so Murphy knew like yeah I'm going to take the brunt until the club gets to where it needs to be but at the same time like Alex Pierce doesn't lead our football club on game day sometimes like he'll have a bad performance you want someone that performs every week which Caleb Sarong does all Australian Caleb Sarong what a year he's had mm. I love him love him yeah should go pretty pretty close to the round though it's going to be yeah. a bit more of an open race now that Dacos is injured. Yeah. I, think it, I reckon Bond. I haven't been following it closely enough. Yeah, fair enough. enough. No, uh, Bond, Bond's been consistently good all year. Yeah. I yeah. think he might uh, might take it home this year. Who's your favorite player to watch in the AFL? I would say Bond and Track. Yeah, I would agree with those two. Yeah. yeah. Probably my one and two plays in the league, to be honest. Yeah. Kerno's probably up there as well. Oh, he's had such a good year, freak. man. He's a freak. I and mean, when I say up there, I mean he's up there in the top handful of plays in the comp now. Yeah. yeah. He's backed it up two years in a row. Yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a freak. He's just like, like I feel like forwards like Kerno have been missing from the game for a while. Like, can you remember just like a real powerful forward that dominates one on ones? Like, Buddy is just a unicorn. But like, who can you remember in recent mem- memory? Like, who have been the Coleman Medal winners? Like Hawkins, Jeremy Cameron. Jeremy Cameron's got to be a top five player in the comp as well. Yeah, actually. yeah. Uh, Kennedy was around that era. Buddy, uh, Rewald. Yeah. Those were probably the best of the last year. They don't strike me as like power forwards for whatever reason. I don't know why. I feel like Kerno is just like, I don't know, just more athletic, I suppose, than like a Josh Kennedy, Jack Revolt. Yeah. Yeah, hard to say. Uh, Kennedy's strength wasn't necessarily like contested power. Yeah. But his, he had a lot of class. And yeah. He still bobbed up for the contested marks and stuff like that. Um, yeah. He's like a David Mundy compared to a, like a Petrarchy, you know what I mean? Like comparing Josh Kennedy to Kerno is like comparing David Mundy to... Like there's no real outstanding attributes, but it's just like class. Yeah. Pendlebury like does it on that level every week. Kennedy's goal kicking was probably his biggest attribute. Yeah. I'd say like nailing him from 50 on an angle. Yeah. Like clutch player. I think that's one of the many reasons he was good. Um, yeah. Anyway, we've talked about enough football in this bloody true <laughs> footy podcast. Um, so what's your body count? <laughs> Um, we should give my roommate the living room back soon. Yeah, but um, yeah, so talk, talk us through, rehash what, what's next for Jerusite. You're here for a few months. Yeah. Um, just going to see how this next month goes. 
see if I'm loving life in Manchester and if I have the money to stay. Um, I've got a couple concerts in the next two months, but I'm looking like I'm going to head back to Australia in November. Um, so then I can save up some money so I can properly crack in, c- 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 crack into AFL content. Crack out. Uh, 2020, <laughs> 2024, like the Druzy channel is going to be more alive than ever. Cause I do, I do miss it. I want to live with Caden cause he's one of my best mates, even though I've met the bloke three times, like we talk all the time. Um, so yeah, go on to Melbourne. I love that city. So Does he live in Melbourne now? Yeah. He lives in <laughs> Oh, doxed, doxed, doxed. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, Melbourne like really excites me. Um ticks every box in terms of like having a social life, um, being able to work in my field. Yeah, that's it and really. And footy culture in general. Yeah, there. exactly. Like over here, like I've got the social life, but I can't really work in my field. Um social is something that I haven't really ever nailed. And I think Melbourne I can nail that. Social is in personal. Social. Yeah, just like being able to go out on a weekend with mates and stuff like that. Um, in a nice city. Um, yeah, Melbourne's very livable as well. So, yeah, have a bit more fun here and like, because obviously this isn't forever. Like being in England isn't forever. So I think yeah, spend a month or two or three more here, have some fun, and then yeah, head home. Beautiful. I like it. What about what about you for the podcast? Um. So right now I've I've got my last trip coming up in a in a fortnight in Greece. I'm going to go on, on another Kentucky. <laughs> Never too old. Where's that going? Is it just Greece? Yeah, Greek islands. So like Athens, Santorini, Mykonos, and Paros. Nice. Not in that order, but yes. Kavos? No. Nah, just I, I got the shorter one. Okay. I didn't want to blow like five grand on a big Greece trip. So I. I How much is a Kentucky? Uh, it varies. Like any of the, like my first one was probably close to three grand. This That's one's like bad. three and a half. But there's people who do it for two months. Yeah. So geez. you're pushing like high teens in yeah of grands yeah <laughs> grands um yeah like we i think the 45 day one's like 10 grand okay yeah so probably probably no nah, probably more than that actually probably more than 10 grand so yeah. yeah they can be expensive um this was my last trip and then uh i gotta get a job so i'm going to get a job related to my degree which was i did law and marketing so yeah. i'll probably pursue marketing and then just um keep keep making content throughout the trade period and stuff like that have a job over winter um, and then next year probably work and travel yeah. for a little bit. So I'd like to be here for the, the full two years. I sure do hope you end up in Melbourne with me, buddy. We'll see. We'll see. If nothing's Maybe 25. Sta- if nothing's bringing you back to Perth. I mean, there is family. I just meant emotionally. I am family, bro. True. True. Married. Maybe 2025. Yeah. If I don't move to Dubai. Shake on it. If I don't move to Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. Who wants to live in Dubai, bro? Uh, it already, it's a good place for people in the early yeah, 30s. Yeah, it, it would be a sick place. I'd need to get a good job, though, which is dependent on me getting a good job here, too. Is Dubai Saudi? Is that where, like, the... No, it's UAE. Is? Yeah. So, I lived in Abu Dhabi. Dubai is just, like, an hour and a half down the road. Right. Yeah. Yep. Nah, Melbourne. That's where my sister met her husband. There you go. Hashtag get uh, Jesse to Melbourne 20, Mark Thurston 2025. Mike Thurston lives in Dubai. He does. What a guy he is. Yeah, go link up with him. Oh, yeah. Collab. Yep. Yeah. True Footy Podcast, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Cool. All right. Well, it's thank been, you. It's been good seeing it you. It has been, it's been real. And um, well, we'll do another one probably yeah. at some point. Fuck yeah, it. you're here for three months. Um, yeah, we'll do more pods. <laughs> like so. a draft live. Oh, I can't oh, yeah. do the grand final show. Oh. I can't actually do that. Why? Got a music festival on grand final. Oh, day. that's disgusting. I know. That's piggish. Yeah, well, we'll be getting up at like... Let me do the math. What time will we be on? It'll be like 4 a.m. Nah. Wait, no. No, 6 a.m. Yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh, but the the pregame will be like from 4. Can we go grand final prediction then? Just while we're on the podcast. Fine. Collingwood beat Brisbane. I've been thinking for a while Brisbane will go all the way this year. Yeah. But I don't think they'll win on Grand Final. Ashcroft day. is a massive out. They've lost like what he brought. So Caden says, I don't follow the AFL anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think... Will it be Collingwood? It's been Collingwood all year for me, but God, Carlton are coming in pretty hot. Yeah, Carlton from fifth is probably too big an ask. I don't think it's going to be Melbourne. I think they haven't really got it figured out just yet. I think it'll be... Oh, Port, no, nah, they're too. They leak too many Port, goals. Port won't have a top. Uh, won't have a top two finish. I don't think. I'm gonna say. 
Oh, Brisbane win the grand final against Collingwood. I think it'll be really? Brisbane or Collingwood. Yeah. So, yeah, Brisbane will likely finish top two now and uh, therefore, in theory, get two home finals and potentially one of them being a prelim. And they've been in prelims for so long now. Like, you just feel like they're ready to take that next step. Yeah. They were in a prelim last year, weren't they? Uh, they beat Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. They, they got smashed by Geelong. Yeah, classic. So, it could be a bit like Port in 04 where they were just hanging around. Were you born? Yeah. Um, where they were just hanging around and then they, they got one right as Brisbane lapsed. It could be like that for Brisbane, yeah. but Collingwood will click into gear. They'll, be, they'll win on grand final day. Yep. I reckon you should cut that off and like put it when we're talking about football and then like, yeah. Cool. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thank you very much for listening, guys. This is the first podcast in five months. Sorry for a little rusty, but uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And... Uh, Druzy's Athlete Academy preseason. That. Yes. If you want a big preseason, hit me up on Instagram at underscore Druzy or at Druzy.AthleteAcademy. I'll sort you out for preseason. Running, strength, guaranteed results. True footy 20 at checkout, 20% off. Thank you very much for listening and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.